I just got done spending a week in Illinois Masonic Hospital, and after this show, if I'm lucky, I'll only spend two weeks in Illinois Masonic Hospital. He's had his road to recovery. And have you heard what's going on with the seafood that's being imported into this country? I'm changing my diet to red meat and processed food. Very, very nasty. Welcome once again to uh, Culture Clash, brought to you by our great friends over at uh, Athens Motors on Waukegan Road in Morton Grove. Well, my blonde friend wearing the... Uh, Shocking blue dress. What's on your uh, cranium today? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tiger Woods playing a game of golf, and uh, this guy runs out and throws a hot dog at him. Claims that it just fell out of his hand, but apparently he actually chucked chucked the hot dog. Huh. Did you you know read about this? What's no, I was unaware of that story. I was <laughs> in uh, Illinois Masonic <laughs> Hospital enjoying their uh, five-star menu. Let me tell you, hospital <laughs> jello, you can't beat it. You were hey, hoping for a hot dog. There are a lot of jerks. I mean, for example, Monday Night Football up at uh, Ford Field, some uh, idiot threw, uh, threw a beer bottle on the, uh, on the field. So, I mean, there are always going to be the one percenters. Tiger Woods is going to be a tiger. Tar Target. <laughs> NBA lockout. Uh, the first two weeks of the regu regular season are canceled. Oh, isn't that a shame? And by the way, we missed all those wonderful exhibition games featuring the Sacramento Kings against the Cleveland Cavaliers and all your red-hot towns like Dubuque, <laughs> Iowa, and Biloxi, Mississippi. You know what? I got news for the NBA and for David Stern, the commissioner. I don't care if you play all year. Go dark. And why do I say that? Because the NBA used to be a man's league. Now it's a kid's league. I don't care about it. Yes, I enjoy watching Derrick Rose, but I can live without Derrick Rose. I don't care if the NBA plays all year long. That being said, Catherine, I, I have the over-under. I predict they will begin playing on or about January 17th. Okay, so of course you're saying a full season will not be played. Things are not looking good. No, it will be truncated. Okay, uh, of course. but uh, I Which mean, is another way of saying shortened. Thank you. <laughs> So they have to come to an agreement for the collective bargaining agreement. Then they're going to need the free agency season. I yeah, mean, and I get sick and tired of hearing the owners talking about that. We're losing dough. In? If the owners are losing dough, open the books. Let us see the books, all right, if you're really losing that much money. You're going to tell me the Chicago Bulls are losing money or the New York Knicks or the L.A. Lakers are losing money. Don't try and con us. We're dumb, but we're not stupid. Okay, well, so they say to the media that this is about, uh, well, in part, about By the, the way, fans. I mention that the mashed potatoes at <laughs> Illinois Masonic <laughs> Hospital are to die for. <laughs> go, go there for the mashed potatoes. Anything else? And the jello? And the jello. Okay, good to know. All right, back to my thought. So, for the media, they state that this is you know partially about the fans and that you know this is this just this is a rich man's game. I mean, no middle class family can really go see a Bulls game anymore, and uh, well, ticket no, prices no are too class high. Family can go see a Bear game anymore. Okay. Well, I'm saying is is that a point? Is that a point for the um, owners, or are they just saying that you know to to please the media? Well, the owners will uh, will spin this in such a way as to make it look like it's fan friendly. But I mean, neither side cares about the fan. This is ultimately about uh, lining their own pockets. And again, I, I just maintain, Catherine, that if the owners claim they are losing as much money as they are losing, why wouldn't they happily open up the books? They won't open up the books because then they would have to reveal how much money they are actually concealing. So, you know what, I, I don't have any sympathy for either side. Again, I don't care if the NBA plays all year. I lived without the NHL five, six years ago. Of course, at that time, the Blackhawks were uh, absolutely dormant. But I don't care if the NBA plays because, frankly, the NBA bores me. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Occupy Wall Street movement. That's where we're going to go to next. Uh, okay, so did you hear what Herman Cain said about this movement? Yes. He said that the people who are involved are jealous. They want to ride in someone else's Cadillac. Uh, they're playing the victim card, and if you're not rich, it's your fault. So don't blame Wall Street. Herman Cain, I actually don't want to ride in a Cadillac. I'd prefer a Lamborghini or a Rolls Royce or something along those lines. So you're a little off, but... Uh, I don't agree with him here. I think that that's, um, that was a low blow for him to state that they're playing the victim You card. ever heard of a guy named uh, Huey Long? No. He was a famous uh, Louisiana politician who was uh, governor of that uh, ill-begotten state, which, by the way, is responsible for the uh, birth of uh, uh, Chet Kopic. Uh Huey Long said years ago God bless in that. office that uh, we are the only nation in the world that will go to the poorhouse in a Cadillac, and that's the way we look right now, in my opinion, as a nation. Uh, Herman Cain, Herman Cain 
is in a marvelous position right now. All he is trying to do with his comments is appeal to the right wing. That's so you, so you don't that think that he actually meant what he said by saying by? Oh, you know, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But this is politics. It's an election. He's doing nothing more than making an appeal. All, all these Republicans are living and dying with the with the conservative right. Right. And this this is obviously an appeal to the conservative right. And you know what, Herman Cain, you got some dough. You made a few bucks. You're a happy-go-lucky guy. Would I vote for you? Yes, I would consider it. But you know what? Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Woo! I mean, obviously this and is... And by the way, let me tell you something else. The average uh, uh, nurse at the Illinois Masonic tips the beams at about 314 pounds. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> well, a, cu a couple... There's Corey going... I can see the lawsuit mm. now, boy. <laughs> I'll tell you. All right, so a couple points that I want to bring up. I, obviously, there's resentment for the bailout, and this is a sign of the frustration of the times for the people. Uh, right now, also, this is costing uh, the New York Police Department 1.9 million dollars in overtime, and it's expected to increase. You were saying, well, there's no crime in Harlem. There's no crime in the Bronx. There's no crime in. Well, this is just Village. before this is just before the necessary budget cut. So this, this isn't is good for you. This is not going to go away, and in many ways, it mirrors 1968 and the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, because what have you got? You have got a fractured part of society that is sick of the establishment. Now it was about you were Vietnam. Saying, you were saying that something big needs to happen, though. You, you well, I, I do. I, I think right now that it's it's very intriguing and it's getting extraordinary media coverage. You flip on Wolf Blitzer, you flip on Chris Matthews, you flip on the CBS Evening News, and they're having a ball with this right now. But eventually, someone is going to have to step out as your your leader, your spokesman, yeah. the focal point of all this. Otherwise, in my opinion, it's going to begin to. Eventually, people are going to say, you know what? Hey, I've been in New York for. Uh, for a month, I'm going back to uh, uh, Tucson, Arizona, because the cold weather's on the way. On the way. I, on the way. I agree. They need some sort of Martin Luther King. They need. Um, otherwise, this is just a little. One little thing too I never got, by the way, at the Masonic was polygrip. <laughs> One what, what other thing I want to bring up is there were images taken of people on um, on Wall Street sipping champagne, taking pictures of the protesters, looking down, smiling and laughing. You said that you also saw them holding a, a sign that said, we are the 1%. Yeah, I saw a sign on LaSalle Street in Chicago that uh, went from uh, oh, one window to another uh, picture window, probably about 16 feet, that said, we are the one percenters. That's that's not going to help the situation, Wall Street. Um, way to put fuel on the fire. Hey, I'd love to be one of the one percenters. Okay. Would you? Um, yes, but I wouldn't be sipping champagne and I wouldn't be smiling down and laughing. That's that's not going to help anyone's cause. Uh, children get a break at the airport security. Uh, you're obviously a father. Do you think that you know? And they're a little bit older now, but would you want your kids to avoid getting a pat down? Or what are your thoughts on this? No, I would have no problem with it whatsoever. And given how bad the uh, security is at uh, O'Hare Field, and this is documented, given how bad the security is in Midway, and this is documented. In my opinion, children who are under the age of 12 should be uh, subjected to every bit of um, uh, security by way of check as uh, your average adult. Uh, what he's talking about is O'Hare Airport has the number one worst security, most hazardous airport, and Midway is number 11. So, Chicago, we're doing well. But we also leave the nation in potholes. <laughs> <laughs> and we have great weather. Uh, yeah, so children 12 and under no longer have to remove their shoes when they go through security, um, and they're less likely to face a pat down under the newly revised rules. I, I am not a mother, but I. By the way, Corey is bored with the show. Okay. Sorry, Corey. <laughs> Corey, you're a parent. Would you let your kids, uh, I mean? Yeah, they have to be searched like everybody else. I agree. Because there are crazy people that put bombs in kids' diaper bags. And, oh, yeah. There's all kinds of crazy This should be a universal rule. Right? I agree. Okay, thank you. All right, this is a disgusting topic. So, filthy sea seafood infected with bacteria or tainted with drugs and antibiotics uh, banned in the U.S. is finding its way onto the plates of Americans, you and I. Only about 2% of imported seafood is inspected, and only 0.1% is tested for banned drugs. So when you What about the effect of human waste? Um, well, that's in there, too. So these That was the loudest, um, ugh, I've ever heard in my it's life. It grosses <laughs> me out. So in places like Thailand and China, they are using human waste and banned drugs to... <laughs> 
grow shrimp and seafood, and then they are sending it over to our country, and only 2% of the stuff is being checked by the FDA. I'm thinking, FDA, are you sleeping in? What this is? This should be on your top five job requirements. I mean, what? What do you What do you do in Thailand? Do you apply for a job? Do a uh, um uh, go to the bathroom to, and then make to, shrimp? To like go, what? To go to the bathroom all day long and then they make shrimp? I, it's <laughs> disgusting. I, I, 80% of our seafood is imported. And I mean, you and I were both talking about earlier that we eat a lot of seafood. And what happens when I go out on a date, the guy orders a shrimp cocktail? I mean, what am I, what am I supposed to say? Where, where'd you get this from China? Is it made out of human waste? I mean... Next time you have seafood, bring your modium. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't even do it anymore. I don't have a change topic. It's just whatever you guys. Mercifully, <laughs> mercifully, my ambulance is waiting outside to take me back to Illinois. Well, I'm gonna, I'll see you in I'm about six run, months. Run me over. Uh, I am now dealing with clinical depression <laughs> as a result of this flummox of a show today. I'm Chet Kopic. This is Catherine Saxon. And uh, embarrassingly, we are brought to you by our great friends over at uh, Athenian Motors. Athens. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Athens Motors. We're so happy they are a sponsor. That's the reason we get to do this show. <laughs> Um, I'm Chet Kopic for Catherine Saxon. It goes through that. I'm Chet Kopic for uh, <laughs> the uh, delightful Catherine Saxon, reminding you next time you're in Thailand, hey, check out the seafood. Meanwhile, you make it a point to check out Athens Motors over on Waukegan Road in Morton Grove for the deals that simply cannot be beat. We'll catch you next time around with uh, Culture Clash. I'm going back to Masonic, a broken man. So long, everybody. <laughs>